They say Phelps, um, you know the story about Phelps, he literally walks into his change room and he's got the videotape playing out what he's going to do, every stroke for all the races that he, he runs and he just runs it through his head every morning, every evening before he goes to bed, him going in, sitting down in the locker room, playing his music right until he takes off his, his clothes, goes out in the pool, he swims every length in his head, gets out of the pool, puts his suit back on, goes up to collect the medal. He just has it in his head Brilliant, yeah. over and yeah. over. And his coach would just say to him, play the tape. Yeah. And then he just play the tape. And I think he takes three days off a year and he's just playing Whoa. those tapes yeah. in his head over and over. And that comes back to the, the visualization of it's just in his head. I think what Tony Robbins said last year was, your brain knows no different. It believes you've already won because mm. you've just played it over and over mm. and over as well. So that comes back to... Yeah. Absolutely, it's it's down to visualizing. Yeah, I suppose visualizing is you know is a first cousin of meditation as well. If you like, it's the same type of process that you're getting yourself into a deep state of relaxation. So it does have those other benefits too. But I remember one of the first things um, he said to me. I said, "Look, I'm really disappointed." I said to Declan Hearn, the sports psychologist. He said, "Well, look, Frankie, you're going to have to get over it." And I said, "Well, how do I get over it?" He said, "Use the ten yard rule." I said, what's the 10 yard rule? He said, when Tiger Woods hits a bad shot, this is when Tiger was winning all the majors, right? Uh, he does it contrary to opinion that he moves on immediately, he doesn't. He allows himself the time between um, hitting the ball and getting the club, putting it back in the bag. And the next 10 yards, he's allowed to give out, moan, yeah. bitch, yeah. do whatever he needs to do to get that out of his system. But once he moves beyond that 10 yards, he moves on. Yeah and it's on to the next shot. And, that, and that's, that's a great lesson for life in general, yeah. Yeah. in any bit of type of an adversity. Yeah. It's a good thing to listen to your emotion and feel what has gone wrong. Sometimes people try and move on too quickly yeah. and, and it builds up inside. So listen, allow yourself time, but then you've got to have a deadline to move on. Also, you can internalize it as well, which doesn't help. So you just sure. get it out of your system, yeah. blurt it out, and then it's done, move on. Sure. Actually, yeah. Uh, you, you crack on. So, um, yeah. the ten yard rule. That's yeah. definitely a keeper. Um, yeah. As well. That's a good one. So, when you started to get that support and help, did that give you kind of an impetus then to continue to see coaches throughout your career to say, "Well, oh, I can become better at certain different parts of my life as well as sport"? Or did you start to do a little bit more reading on that? Was that a catalyst, or is just? Yeah, I mean, I, I went then to see, I spoke to Don Lenehan and there was a throwing coach over in the UK and I just made it my business that I was going to see this guy and I was going to make sure that, so that was the mental side, but I needed to actually get the, uh, the mechanical type side as well to see if I, my technique was right. And we went through a, a probably a three hour session at I think Gatwick Airport or something like that. And the beauty about that was it wasn't a, typical coaching role I'm all for coaching but sometimes this sort of sit around and listen for an hour two hours you know I, I like things moving faster and yeah. I guess if this guy if it was his business to maybe procure me for six sessions um, he'd have to do it that way and drip feed it but he was doing it as a favor to Don Lennon, so he gave it all to me in one go. I took for loads of notes and I had it on video. He gave me a video of myself and those two things anyway were the catalyst for me uh, to make change. So I think, you know, you know, you, you do, you've, you've flattered me saying I'm a success and all this. I, I've, uh, you know, I'm in a lucky position that I'm seeing, meeting and listening and learning and working with absolute masters and leaders in, in their business. So a lot of what I'm saying really is stuff that I have learned from these guys. It's not original stuff that I'm coming up with. And, uh, you know, I've read books from a hundred years ago and a lot of the same principles are, 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 are the <coughs> same back then as they are now, even if you go back to the Bible, not that I'm reading the Bible every day, but a lot of these are said in different ways within the, the Bible, you know. so. I think it's about trying to surround yourself, be it a, biz, a very good business coach, be it mentors is what some people would call them. Yeah. But, you know, people who are, I mean, you were at Pendulum 17 this year, right? You know, there is something called osmosis. So if you park the, the fantastic content that you're getting from the speakers, 
it's the people who are sitting around you. The people who, this guy could have just sold his company for a couple of hundred million. This person could be the CEO of one of the big IT companies. And they're all highly motivated and driven. And it's that type of learning that you're getting from these people. It's that peer-to-peer -peer type conversations. And I think one of the things is, is we're all a bit competitive in our own way. I, you know, I suppose going through the rugby and sport, you needed to be competitive. And what was very helpful for us at the time was that there was a group of us that came on together. Uh, going back, you guys like Brian O'Mara, you had Ronan O'Gara, you had Tom Tierney, David Wallace, Anthony Horgan, Mick O'Driscoll, Peter Stringer. And, you know, if one guy got picked in the Ireland A team and we were only in the 21s, we'd be delighted for him, but we'd be, I want to get there too. Of course you do. And one guy gets a cap, you wanted to get there too. And it gave you more belief that you could. I said, well, if he can do it, I can do it. Yeah. So I guess it's about, you know, being open to constantly improve yourself. And, you know, that's, that's not a new thing. <coughs> but surrounding yourself, I think, as well with people who are, what do they say, you know, if, if you're the most intelligent guy in the room, you're in the wrong room, you know, yeah. but it's, it's trying to, you know, but to a certain extent, it's not all about that. For me, I love a bit of balance too. I love to have a bit of fun. I love to have a few drinks with my friends. I like to, and it's not, it doesn't all have to be intense, but it's getting the right balance for you. I think what I've found, the best thing about Pendulum is, to your right or to your left, people want to develop and want to grow, and they're open to listen to different ideas. Sure. So when you're going to meet with someone, they're just very engaged and they're, they're very open to talking about a variety of different things. You don't get someone to shoot you down an idea. They'll actually listen to it. Mm. As silly as it might sound in the face of it, if mm. there's a result at the end, they'll actually mm. come through and actually speak about that as well. And irrelevant of age, people just want to develop and become better and more engaged. And I think if I was to sum up what Pendulum could probably do for someone to go, it gives you confidence to believe that if you're interested in self-development to go to the next level, there's an awful lot of other people who want to go on that journey yeah. too. Mm. You just might necessarily be in contact with those people on a day-to-day -day basis mm. because the vast majority of people are happy enough just to plod along and be kind of, I wouldn't say directionless, but kind of taken with the flow. These mm. people know where they're going. Sure. They're very determined and they're very comfortable seeking help but also helping out others as well. Mm. That's quite a powerful um, environment to be in because mm. you just feel yourself raising you're mm. raising your game and mm. you mentioned before over the years that when you put the Ireland jersey on you gain a few inches mm. I think when you're in that kind of company that's why my wife gets me to keep one under the bed I'm going to keep that for, <laughs> not, 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 not for this show I'm going to be careful that one. But I, I definitely think there's something in that because yeah. the average of the five people you hang around with yeah. I think there is some overlap between what you become, and there is there is balance. But if you're if you're working with people and supporting people that have got big dreams mm. and they actually want to kick on, mm. that's pretty compelling to be around. And if you're mm. working with 50 leaders on the Munster field, that even if the a Treviso lineout is better than theirs, and even you've beaten them 60 nil, mm. you want to develop that. That's a mindset that's very compelling to be around. Sure, yeah. it probably ties into my next question. What was it like leaving all those leaders, mm. retiring, and probably mm. retiring in an injury that was probably forced upon mm. yourself, mm. going from that mindset mm. to back in mm. the real world? Yeah, it, looking back, it was a, a challenge. I guess everybody likes to go out on their own terms. I was coming to the end of my Munster career. Jerry Flannery, who was the, the second choice up to a few years before he finished and he got the, the door open for him when I got a bad neck injury and he got in and he took his chance and I never really got my place back ahead of him after it and it becomes a different environment you know when you try everything and you just keep running at that door uh, at that brick wall and you just can't get through and you just keep going and you make the most of it you do the best you can and I then had got set up then with a contract down in Brieve in the south of France and I, had a, I ended up getting a career-ending injury, really. It was a torn pec muscle. But it, I wasn't, it didn't, that, that didn't kill me too much, really, because it, there was something nice in finishing in Munster as well. Yeah. And I think most, very few players, looking back now, get the opportunity to really uh, go out on their own terms. It doesn't happen very often. And, you know, it's, it's, it's bigger than the individual, so that's the way it should be, too. Yeah. Uh, so 
while while I was leaving it, there was obviously lots of emotion because I had given everything to it. Um, it was a, a very, I suppose, close close knit community. The parents, the families, the brothers, the sisters, and the fact that it was a real monster team. I guess you had people from Kerry, you had people from Cork, you have Waterford, uh, Clare, Tip, Limerick. It, it was fully, it was fully monster. And, and the fans were kind of family and extended family, so it was it, it was you know it was very tough and emotional to take. But I guess probably slightly previous to that, I had I suppose with a view I knew my career was going to end, and with a view to uh, having a pension for myself when I finished, yeah. I invested. I continued that investment from I suppose I bought a place when I was about eighteen or nineteen, and continued to purchase properties with a view to look this there's no guarantee you're going to have a business that's going to be able to pay for your family and stuff like that and when the crash happened I guess I was a well I was a paper millionaire before I finished uh, maybe in 2006 or 7 yeah. that type of thing um, no I'd be a negative probably paper millionaire so yeah. interesting talking about what is success um, the, the, the ironic thing is I'm 10 times the person I was yeah. 10 years ago and I wouldn't trade it, yeah. even though financially I was probably better off then. And that's the interesting thing about what is success. Is success economic success or is success about all those other things that go with personal yeah. development and being a better person yeah. and that. So I'm, I'm fascinated with that. But I think that that whole process um, was helpful in some ways. Yes, it was stressful. Um, you know, you find yourself on one hand, um, here you are, you know, working for, if you like, and doing your passion and, and you know, you're getting paid and you're putting everything aside. Yeah. And next thing you're fighting to keep your family home for your kids. So um, that forced me into really uh, making things happen after, after rugby. I had to just work around the clock. A lot of people um, would have crumbled under that type of pressure. Like, like, because you, you say it like, it's just, you got through it and you worked through it. You finished your career, mm. you, you had horrific injuries throughout your career mm. as well. I think mm. you had 29 caps for Ireland. Mm. You probably could have got, again, 50, 80, if not more, right? So what, yeah. Ron Nagara got 120, 100 plus, right? 128, I think he 128, got. 128, right? So you're probably looking over thinking, I'm definitely not getting what I need to get mm. in terms of my rewards. That's happened to you. Is there not an element where you're thinking, this is there's something up here? this isn't right was there not a voodoo doll in, mm. in some ways or mm. yeah abs absolutely there was times there when all the adversity i had during the playing career no if you told me before i started that i would get 29 caps i would have grabbed it yeah but when you're there i always wanted more i have the record for the person who sat on the bench the most amount of times without getting a cap Right. So and I, think, I, 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 I actually do, I don't there. have the exact figure, but it's, it's about stat. it's about thirty five or something, like forty maybe. So like a question of sport, like literally that would be the stat that they they wouldn't they would they wouldn't get it. I'd say I don't think anyone would have it off the top of their head, but I would love to know. I'd but say it's get it. in the Six Nations alone, it's about eighteen or nineteen or something like that. And um, so I was involved an awful lot more, which as you say could have had me at but sixty or seventy. And then you had the injuries and the other things yeah. that went against me, right? And yeah, you'd start thinking is at the time, is there something against me? Is there a curse? Is there something in the back? But I guess when I look back now and I, I think, and I'm not trying to be overly positive, but I actually learned more from the adverse times than the good times. And sometimes I, I think the Buddhists have some saying that they pray for adversity in their lives because, wow. yeah, because they, you, you need it to learn. You're not. I mean, if you go golfing and you you know hit the ball up, and the first par four and hit the second ball, it goes into the hole. Next one's a par three, hit it goes into the hole. I mean, there's no fun in that. Don't get me wrong. You're not. You don't want too much adversity. But yeah. by learning how you get out of the trees, how you do it, everything. There's a. You learn from each challenge, and and I certainly have had all my learnings from that. So, in some ways, I I feel you know. This financial crisis is probably the last one I'm gonna. I, I, I'm done with it. I, yeah. I've learned so much, and there's always curved balls, <coughs> but it's how you handle it. And you know what is success? Is it is money success? It's taught me it's not. I, I mean, I don't. 
I have a great respect for money, but I don't care about it. Yeah. I don't care about it in, in other ways. Don't, and I'm not, not saying that flippantly. Just because an enabler. Yeah, it's an enabler, and, and money is the byproduct of success. So, um, yeah, absolutely. There's, there's, do, do I have regrets? I'd, I'd love to have one more caps, but would I have been as hungry and as productive as I was post-rugby if I didn't go through that? Maybe not. <laughs>